hidden messages, inappropriate images, and suggestive material. Let me be the point man. I thought the Earth wasn't supposed to move until the honeymoon. The shadowy world of Disney Easter eggs has been well documented over the years, but there is one conspiracy theory that stands tall above them all. It's the idea that the CGI classics of a particular world-renowned animation studio are all interconnected. An object here, a blink and you'll miss it cameo there. It's all just good fun for eagle-eyed fans, right? Or is it something more? When combined, do these connections tell a story that's much darker and way more unsettling than what you find on the surface? And even worse, could it be mirroring real life in some ways? We're about to find out. Welcome back. You're watching Conspiracy Vibes. And this is the Pixar theory. We have a lot of ground to cover, but before we down to business, here's a little bit of backstory. The complex narrative of the Pixar theory was created by a film critic, writer, and YouTuber known as John Negroni. He got the idea from watching a Crack.com video from 2012 about Pixar movies, and he spent the last 11 years finding ways to fit things in. Today, we're going to build on what John started, expanded, and even changed some things to fit our own unique vision. What follows is the definitive version of the Pixar theory, with every Pixar film so far woven into it. Let's get started. This theory begins with Pixar's 2023 film, Elemental. Elemental takes place in Element City, a place where citizens are made up of the four elements, fire, water, earth, and air. Humans, animals, and machines as we know them are notably absent from this universe which leads us to believe that the events of Elemental take place at the very beginning of the Pixar timeline, at a point where the building blocks of life are being created for the first time. It's also interesting to notice how much of human life and its complexities are represented by the elements long before there were any humans. Elemental has a ton of Easter eggs, but the only ones we need to know for this theory are the infamous A-113 and the presence of a Pizza Planet vehicle in this universe. These two things pop up in just about every Pixar movie to date. Next, we have The Good Dinosaur. This film shows the first time the Pixar universe has a major deviation from our own. Whereas a meteor wiped out the dinosaurs in our universe 66 million years ago, that same meteor missed the Earth in the Pixar universe. This means that dinosaurs never went extinct. Instead, they grew in intelligence and eventually coexisted with humans. This is the first time we see animals displaying high levels of intelligence and human characteristics, which is something that becomes very important later on. The Good Dinosaur features a cameo from a certain octopus from a later Pixar film. But the most important takeaway is that creatures other than humans have the capacity for human emotion and intelligence. In Brave, things begin to get really interesting. This movie introduces the concept of magic to the Pixar universe through the presence of a witch in Will of the Wisps. The witch uses the wisps to give sentience and human behavior to animals and inanimate objects, hold that thought for later, and even turn humans into animals. She also creates portals and disappears when she walks through doorways, which brings us to this film's connection to the wider Pixar universe. As pointed out by numerous fans, the witch's hut has a few interesting things scattered around it. There's a wood carving of Sully from Monsters, Inc. in one scene, and there's also a wooden Pizza Planet truck in another. These items make the witch very suspicious. How could she know what the Pizza Planet truck looked like if she lived in 10th century Scotland? And how could she possibly be able to carve the image of a monster known for terrorizing children hundreds of years later? The answer to those questions are coming up later in the video. Our idea deviates from the established Pixar theory, but trust us, it'll be worth it. The next Pixar film is Luca, which takes place in 1959. This one isn't terribly important for the development of the Pixar theory, but it is connected to the rest of the universe in an interesting way. This YouTube short from Just the Nobody shares the theory that the sea creatures from the film might not just be one-off beings. They could actually be a species of monster from Monsters, Inc. that was banished from the monster world because they can take on a human appearance. 
check it out. Have you heard of the theory about Luca? No. So I saw a video by Flicks in the City, and there's a crazy theory that Luca is actually a monster from Monsters, Inc. What? Okay, think about it. In Luca, we see how monsters turn into humans on land and monsters in the water. And we know in Monsters, Inc., monsters are super scared of humans. And when a monster's being punished, they get banished to the human world forever. Like Mike said, the Abominable Snowman and the Loch Ness Sea Monster. And we also see that sea monsters have a very similar power to Randall. Sea monsters can change their appearance in and out of water, and Randall can change his appearance to match his surroundings. And in Monsters University, we see monsters going to school underwater so that means there's monsters that live underwater all the time randall does kind of look like a sea monster exactly so the theory is that the sea monster species in luca are actually part of the monster world but once they saw they had the ability to turn into humans they were banished into the human world forever and that's why they live amongst humans in luca that actually makes sense the pixar theory continues and begins to pick up steam with the incredibles and the incredibles 2. set sometime in the 1960s these two films shaped the future timeline of the entire cinematic universe in The Incredibles, humans who have developed superpowers take center stage. However, there are more important things developing below the surface. For instance, the development of advanced AI in the form of the Omnidroid and the zero-point energy it runs zero on. Zero point energy. When the Omnidroid is destroyed at the end of the movie, it releases all of its zero-point energy into the environment, including the water it explodes in. In turn, the energy begins to take hold on and seeps into inanimate objects, like toys, among other things. The theory here goes that this energy gives the objects not just power, but also something that resembles sentience. Now, when have we seen this happen before? Back in Brave, when the witch used the wisp magic to do the exact same thing. This might be a bit of a stretch, but what if zero-point energy and the witch's magic are the same thing? It's a pretty major connection worth thinking about, but let's continue. The Incredibles 2 sees the extinction and sharp decline in public perception of superheroes after the events of the first movie. It turns out leveling half of a city doesn't put you in anyone's good books. The film also sees the rise of the by and large corporation, which you'll recognize as a major player from other Pixar movies. They also play a massive role in the downfall of humanity in this universe. But we'll get to that. It's what we sell. That's why everyone loves BNL. Before we move on, The Incredibles movies tie into both Monsters, Inc. and A Bug's Life directly thanks to these Easter eggs. Pixar's 2022 film Lightyear would technically be slotted in here, but it's supposed to be an actual movie from the Toy Story universe the one that made Andy want a Buzz Lightyear toy in the first place. For that reason, we aren't sure if it contributes to the Pixar theory itself, but it does have plenty of Easter eggs for other Pixar movies, including Elemental. Oh, get sandwiches from, there's a drink called Wade Water. A 113. Building seen through the window of Alicia's office. Onward. It's from Onward and the vending machine. And of course, Toy Story. The side of the road that Buzz drives down. Now Toy Story is where things start to really come together. The first Toy Story film takes place in the same year it was released, 1995. With that, we can assume that these events happen roughly 30 years after The Incredibles. In that time, by and large has become a bigger company and has even gotten into the toy business. The Pixar theory suggests that B&L created toys like Woody, Buzz, and the gang to harvest the power of human emotions, but we don't entirely agree. While humanity and its many aspects definitely play a role in how things develop, we think the ZPE wisps in the environment are what actually brought the toys to life. Because they spend so much time with their children, they become incredibly attached to them. In Toy Story 2, we see the toys become increasingly affected by their humans and take on even more of their traits. Woody fears his mortality. Jessie questions her purpose after her human abandons her. All human feelings and emotions. Because of these feelings, it's clear that there are signs of unrest beginning to form among the toys. Toy Story 3 is an explosion of connections. Here, it's revealed that Andy knows Carl and Ellie from Up, we see an older version of Boo from Monsters, Inc., whose real name is Mary, and the B&L batteries in Buzz are proof that the company continues to exist and grow in power as of 2010. Toy Story 4 shows how the toys gain intelligence and sentience the longer they are around. Woody is basically a fully formed person complete with memories and well-defined relationships, while Forky is only maybe two steps away from a regular plastic fork in terms of sentience at the beginning of the movie. We believe that the ZPE in the environment speeds up the rate of growth for the inanimate objects, who become smarter and more sentient much faster than the dinosaurs did in The Good Dinosaur. 
Toy Story 4 also has a double dose of links to other Pixar movies. With these pieces of the puzzle in place, analyzing the movies in the middle of the Pixar timeline becomes much easier, turning red deals with magic that transforms humans into animals, wisps, and an astral plane that many believe to be the same one featured in Soul. Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, and Ratatouille all deal with the expansion of consciousness in animals from the explosion at the end of The Incredibles. It also shows that, like the toys in Toy Story, the more time they spend with humans, the smarter they become. For instance, because Dory was raised in captivity, she can read and understand multiple languages, and Remy can read and cook. In Up, we see BNL is expanded to the point of dealing in real estate and building skyscrapers, as shown by the logo on the construction equipment. BNL is actually the company that Carl refuses to sell his house and land to before he goes on his adventure. Inside Out reveals that the power humans possess comes from their emotions, which are powered by their memories. Combined with ZPE, this human power spreads to both objects and animals and partly causes the human traits those things display after they have been exposed to humans long enough. We also meet Bing Bong, who is Riley's imaginary friend and believed to be the suppressed memory of a comedy monster from Monsters, Inc. So bro, have you ever heard of this theory that Bing Bong from Inside Out is a monster who worked for Monsters, Inc? The elephant one, right? The elephant Monsters, one. Monsters, Inc. <laughs> it's possible. Now we enter what we're calling the final chapter. If we consider everything from Elemental to The Incredibles 2 to be one chapter and everything from Toy Story to Inside Out another one, then all of the movies that follow make up the end of a three-part saga. Like the dinosaurs in The Good Dinosaur and the supers from The Incredibles the time of humans is approaching its end. This is when we get the films Coco and Soul, both of which deal heavily with the concept of an afterlife and might even be different perceptions of the same place based on the backgrounds and the beliefs of the characters. Approximately 100 years later, there are no more humans. The pollution caused by BNL, which grew so much that it absorbed government systems, and the greediness of other megacorporations pushed Earth to the point of catastrophe, and the animals and machines who watched it happen imbued with sentience from their human contact and ZPE, fought back until the remaining humans were shuttled into space on the BNL Starship Axiom. After that event, the sentient vehicles of the Cars trilogy and its spin-offs took charge of the planet and enjoyed their human-free existence for a while. But with fuel running out and no humans to siphon energy from, the era of sentient vehicles has its days numbered. 700 years after the humans' departure, we meet Wally. This humble little bot spends hundreds of years on Earth alone, cleaning up the remains of multiple failed civilizations. There are no humans, no cars, and only one animal in the form of a cockroach that he befriends. He survives on solar power and the residual human energy he gets from collecting their leftover, hastily abandoned trinkets, including what looks like Carl's walker from up. The AI from The Incredibles also plays a part, as it now runs the Axiom and keeps what is left of humanity docile and powerless. At the end of Wall-E, he and Eve liberate the humans and plant a seedling that was found earlier in the movie. That seedling grows to be the tree in a bug's life, where the theory picks up another hundred years later. Things seem to be good, at least on the small scale we see in a bug's life. Fueled by a reinvigorated human population and their desire to do things right this time, these bugs are really smart. We already know that ZPE and human energy can make animals smart, but we see these bugs put on circuses, build complex machinery, and live far longer than they typically do. This might give you some hope for the future of this universe. 
and the presence of little human hallmarks from previous movies like the Chinese takeout container. and the Pizza Planet truck could lead you to think that humanity is doing well, but that's unfortunately not the case. Despite trying their best, humanity was doomed as soon as they returned to Earth. Centuries of environmental abuse and ecological disaster soured the planet. The rotting corpses of dinosaurs, humans, and sentient cars and animals released their ZPE back into the environment, where it was corrupted and forever changed. Over time, this corrupted zero-point energy, poisoned will-of-the-wisps, bad magic, whatever you want to call it. It set this universe on a very different trajectory. It infected humanity and caused them to evolve into the elves we see in Onward. This also explains why there are cars, highways, homes, and so many other things that are recognizable to modern humans instead of a pure fantasy world where none of those things would be present. It slowly turned animals into monsters, which overthrew and eliminated what was left of humanity but not wanting to make the same mistakes that the machines did in the Cars era, they knew they needed to harvest human energy somehow, so they didn't die out. This resulted in the creation of the doorways for Monsters, Inc. and Monsters University, which were first used to collect fear and then joy, both of which are powerful human emotions we learned about in Inside Out. Barring the upcoming Pixar films, this brings us to the end of the timeline. So, what is the connective tissue what binds this theory together and makes it cohesive? According to John's original theory and our own findings, it's Boo. The little girl from Monsters, Inc. forms a deep bond with Sully and Mike over the course of that movie, but she takes a particular shine to Sully. When the big blue monster stops making regular visits, presumably at some point after 2007, when we see her slightly older in Toy Story 4, she becomes obsessed with seeing her friend again. She spends much of her adult life looking for ways to access the door portals, and then she discovers the magic-slash-wisps-slash-ZPE that powered the monster's door. She learns to harness this magic in its early, uncorrupted state, and then figures out how to create her own doorway portals through time. However, lacking the evolutional strength of the monsters, the magic began to twist Boo's mind. She was shunned by her family, ostracized by society, and forced to take up residence in a quiet shack centuries before she would be born. The wisps continued to eat at her brain until she forgot what her mission even was, and she was left with only certain images and impressions. A creature, a delivery truck. As she travels to different points on the timeline, she leaves mementos in an attempt to remember the places she has already been. Sometimes she gets the mementos mixed up and they end up outside of their proper time, this is how the Easter eggs are formed, and it is how the entire Pixar cinematic universe is connected. Now, this is a wild and interesting theory, but how does it relate to our own reality? Well, with the rampant proliferation of AI and corporate greed we're currently experiencing, we're not quite at the ecological disaster that brings about the end of our world, but you can kind of see how it can turn into that from here.